Welcome to our Remembrance Sunday service. May we never forget the sacrifices that our servicemen and women have made. May we never take for granted the freedom we enjoy each and every day. In our service, please welcome... Now let us light the Christ candle. We light the memorial candle, remembering again all the servicemen and women who have made sacrifices for the freedom we enjoy each and every day. Please join with me in the call to worship as printed as bold on your screen. On this day of remembrance, O oh God, we give thanks for peacekeepers and pacifists, for those who served on the front lines and those who protest and march, for those who volunteered and those who waited anxiously at home, for those who hoped that things would get better, and those who could not stand by and wait. We give thanks for those who believe that the world could be a better place. We remember those who pay the ultimate sacrifice, trusting that others could and would carry the torch. We give thanks for those who were once enemies, who have become friends and allies. Our opening hymn today is from Voice United, hymn number 806, O God, our help in ages past. Continue in the opening prayer. As we pay fitting tribute and honor to the memory of those who have died in the service of our country, may we be so inspired by the spirit of their love and courage that, forgetting all selfish and unworthy motives, we recall with tenderness and respect lost their lives from this community. 
We pray for all those still caught up in conflicts across the world. We pray for peace. May it start with peace in our hearts. Now let us sing the Lord's Prayer. Assurance of God's grace. Each of you have the stone to your shoulder, so you will have something later to mark the occasion. When your children ask you, what are these stones to you? Then you will say, these stones are a permanent memorial for the people of God. God has delivered us, and God will continue to deliver us. Amen. Sing your praise to God eternal. Sing your praise to God the Son. Sing your praise to God the Spirit, living and forever one. God has made us, God has blessed us, God Children's hymn is from Voice United, hymn number 244, Sing Your Praise to God Eternal, followed by the moment of discovery.
The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Joshua, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. And this section is referred to as the memorial stones. And it came to pass, when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men, 
whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe, and Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial to the children of Israel forever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your memory is very powerful. You can be driving in the car, but all of a sudden you remember a tender moment with the family members, a hug or funny stories. I remember on one Sunday I preached on how to live a normal life. After the service, this lady came up to me and said, Bright, do you know what is normal? Normal is the setting of a dryer. I remember Paul, Paul Wesley, who went to be with the Lord. Paul said, Bright, why did a porcupine cross the road? I don't know. Paul said, to show to the fox that it could be done. Now you know how I got all the Coney jokes. It could have been 10 years ago, but it doesn't matter. It still brings a smile to our face. We start to feel those same emotions, joy, kindness, warmth, just like it was happening again. On the other hand, everything is going great, but then we start to remember a sad event. Somebody passed away or a deal that didn't go through. Before long, we can be down and discouraged. We dwell on memories, good or bad. And your memory is very powerful. The Israelites in the reading today, they were dealing with negative memories. They were about to enter into the promised land, but the Bible records many couldn't make it because, in part, negative memories were holding them back. In the wilderness, they encounter so many hardships, attacked by enemies, lack of water, lack of food. Their faith was tested through fire, plagues, snakes, sinkholes. God told them that I will, God made a promise, I will take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. But negative memories were holding them back. One way that they dealt with negative memories is that they remembered what God did in the wilderness. You know, our mind, if you leave it in neutral, naturally our mind gravitates toward negative. Walter Callaghan a former platoon commander of the Unit 25 ambulance in the Afghan war. Walter said this at the Global News interview, Canada still falls short in treating the soldiers' mental health. He himself, at the war, watched as his friends and young soldiers died in Afghanistan. He himself dealt with post-traumatic stress disorder for years and years. But somehow, instead of staying down in the darkness, he intently found his own way out through reading and writing. I'm glad that I say to you that Walter Callaghan, uh, today, is a Ph.D. candidate of the University of Toronto. And he's still trying to help those soldiers who are dealing with mental issues. Between our exodus, so to speak, and entering into the promised land, we encounter 
our wilderness. And instead of allowing a stronghold of bad memories to form, the Bible teaches us we can still put a new song in our heart, giving ourselves a new beginning. God said to the Israelites, Go over and take the ark, the ark of the Lord, as well as a stone. Take up a stone on your shoulder to serve as a sign among you. About two miles apart from the entrance of the promised land, the Israelites, they were ready. They were willing. Verse 8, they took 12 stones across the middle, cross to the middle of the river, Jordan River, and set up 12 stones in the middle of the river, like God told them to do so. But the people, the people, they saw God cut off the water, just like God did to Moses' time. Now they, are, they were walking on the dry land, dry ground, but they, they, they left and they knew the waters were going to re-emerge and devour the stream bed. But then the question is, why in the world would someone put a pile of rocks in the middle of the water that no one can see? Why God told them to put the memorial in the middle of the river? It's wrong to think that no one can see that memorial. At the end of verse 9, it's just beautiful to read. The stones, although, although they are in the water, the stones are still there today. There are memorial stones that are not seen. And there are memorial stones only we have set up inside of our heart. As we remember our servicemen and women today and their sacrifices, is there any memorial stones that are not seen, but the memorial stones that only we can see in our heart? Here is the interesting part in the Bible. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean to you? And God, God make a specific commandment here. God said, tell them, tell your children, the flow of Jordan River was cut off. These stones are a permanent memorial for us. This memorial stone this Remembrance Sunday, this Remembrance Day ceremony wasn't just meant to be enjoyed and remembered by us alone. The Bible gave us, the Bible gives a specific commandment here. Tell your children. Pass it on to your children and to your children's children. God specifically commanded, tell your children. Here, the Bible intently juxtaposes Moses with Aaron and Joshua and Caleb. If Joshua would continue, as if Joshua would continue what Moses had started. In, Joshua, in the book of Joshua 4, God told them to build two memorials, not one two memorials, as if God is telling them to build one for Moses and the other one for Joshua, as if God is telling them one is for the past and the other one is for the future, as if God is telling us, let go of the past and watch out for what is Coming for the other. They crossed the Red Sea with Moses. Now they crossed the Jordan River with a new leader, Joshua. 
They began with a journey with a former leader, but they ended up, they ended their journey with a new leader. God gave a specific requirement. Tell your children. Tell what? God said, tell your children, I was able to come this far because someone in the past made a sacrifice for me. When we tell our children, family members, about these memorial stones, about our Remembrance Day ceremony, don't we believe that our children, they have a future? The moment Joshua speaks to them, he anticipates a future. We anticipate our children will do good have a job, marry, become successful. When we tell them the water was cut off, we crossed over the wilderness, we anticipate a future. And that's, that's what the Bible says about letting go of the past and looking forward to the future that is coming. No one guarantees the future, but we have every reason to believe that God is going to take us, take our children and their children to the promised land. Children may and they will ask the question, why do they fight and die in the war? Why is it so important we every year at this designated time Take this time of solemn remembrance. And this is what the Bible says that we have to tell our children. We crossed over this Jordan on dry land. As the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, God dried up this Jordan River. The generation that went through the Red Sea were already gone. Moses gone. This is the new generation who are occupying the promised land. There are some answers for our children should come. Some answers only should come from our lips only. When they ask, what do these stones mean to you? We shouldn't we should not answer to that question. Ask your teacher. Ask your mom. Ask Google. Some answers should come from our lips only. Years ago, I still remember as if it happened yesterday. I was dressed in my clergy gown and I was attending this uh, town's Remembrance Day ceremony. The entire town the people came out to attend the ceremony. About 700, 800 people gathered in the, at the center top of the town. Many servicemen and women were in their uniform. There were bagpipers, ladies, auxiliaries, politicians. It was one of those high-end Remembrance Day ceremony. After the ceremony, this one gentleman very casually dressed. He came up to me and asked, asked uh, are you the new minister? And I said, I am. Yes, I am. And I asked him, was your member uh, at the service, at the First War or Second World War? And this gentleman said very humbly, I was at Korea and fought there during the Korean conflict. And I said, oh, uh, I am Korean, by the way, and thank you so much for your service. By the way, why you are not in the uniform? Why did you not come and join the ceremony? And I never forget what he said to me that day. He said, oh, I remember all. I remember all. It's all here. It's all in my heart. The memorial 
is here. God gave a specific commandment here in the book of Joshua chapter 4. When the children ask you, what are these memorial stone mean meaning to you? God said, tell your children, tell your children the water was cut off. We were able to make it because what God did for us. Amen. Now let us take the time of remembrance. Before the reading, I would like to, to recognize the men and women who served and who are presently serving in our armed forces. We are indebted for your sacrifice and grateful for your service. Thank you. In Flanders Field, written by John McRae. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses row and row that mark our place. And in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Field. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not worry them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. 
please stand for the last post. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you.
Eternal rest grant unto them, O God, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of the righteous, through your great mercy, rest in peace. Amen. voices together in the offering prayer. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world, O God, and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honor the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Prayers of the people, let us pray together. We offer to you, O God, our prayers for those who seek justice and resist evil. We pray for those who need your presence and strength to stand firm. For those who oppose to the use of violence in any form in faithful response to the Prince of Peace. We pray for those prepared to be firm to protect those in danger. We pray for those who walk with others who need strength. We pray for those who protest, those who organize letter campaigns, those who give sacrificially on behalf of others. We pray for those who speak the unpopular truth, who protect the unpopular victims, who choose the unpopular path of peace. We pray for those who do not let their desire for peace hinder the requirements of justice, and for those who do not let their zeal for justice override the call for peace. On this Remembrance Sunday, merciful God, we pray for peace in our hearts and homes, in our nations and our world. The peace which is your will, the peace which we so badly need. We pray for all who face difficulties in their personal lives, problems in their families, in their friendships in their neighborhoods, or in their workplace. 
Help them to be calm in times of uncertainty and patient with those around them. Show us when we can help and give support to others around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is from Voices United, hymn number 682, O Day of Peace. thoughts and prayers go out to every service man and woman of this country. May we never forget all the sacrifices they have made. Let us continue what God has told us to do. Remember what God has done through the people God has appointed to the work of God's peace. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ Love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.